So, my name is Alex Pantages. I went by the air name of Al Monday. Uh, before that, it was Brother H. Uh, I worked at KFJC from 1979-80 to about 1984, uh, late 83. I was program director, and before that, I was production director. I hosted a blues show that was on Monday mornings for three years. Uh, it's actually still running. It's actually one of the longest running shows, I think, on KFJC still. Um, and I also hosted the open mic show. Uh, the very first show I actually ever did was the open mic show was on a Saturday and my first guest was a then 19 year old kid from Palo Alto named Stanley Jordan. And he would play guitar by using both hands on the fretboard and he would hammer the strings instead of actually plucking them. And he'd play with a little polytone amp, uh, play all by himself. It was one of the coolest things. I, I don't know how many Grammys Stanley has won, but uh, I know he's won quite a few Grammy albums to date. He be, went on to become pretty famous. So, so my big claim to fame was my first show with Stanley Jordan. Uh, the other thing that I really enjoyed doing was being part of a couple of the specials at KFJC. I was here when we did the first April Fool's Day. We went rock and roll, top 40. Uh, the second year we did a dual broadcast and we actually set it up so one studio was broadcasting regular KFJC in the left channel and the production studio was broadcasting jazz in the right channel. So if you just turned on your radio, you literally heard two things coming at you at the same time. But if you faded to the left or faded to the right, you got two completely different stations. Um, the other thing that I was probably the uh, most happy about, most proud of, and just happy to be a part of was the Louie Louie special. Uh, Frank and Stretch put this thing together with, uh, along with the help of several other people. Um, but I was involved in the Louis, Louis Louis special in a couple of ways. Uh, I was an engineer, I used to do sound. So uh, the Saturday that Jack Ely came up and Lady Bo's band was here and Richard Berry was here, he played live in actually this building right here, which is across from the main studio of KFJC. So we set up in this old English room, cleared all the furniture out and set up Richard Berry and Lady Bo and we ran all the microphones into the studio. And Marty Priest and I mixed the sound while they played live. So it was pretty cool. Um, the other thing was just getting a chance to meet Richard Berry. I remember the day he came up, he, uh, he had come up on the train and I remember he walked into the radio station and he had a newspaper in his hand. It was the, it was the San Francisco Chronicle and front page was his picture and it was the whole article about the Louis Louis special. And he was so happy, he was so proud, so surprised and grateful and just ecstatic that his song and his music was getting this kind of recognition. I just remember the smile on his face. Um, such a neat guy. So we, we sat and we talked a little bit while they were getting everything set up. Um, also, Rhino Records had the album, The Best of Louie Louie at the time, and I got a copy, and he signed it, and I still have the record, obviously, but the one thing I remember was the way he signed it. It just says, to Alex, beautiful man, beautiful. And that's my Richard Berry story. He's a great guy. Stations like KFJC have to exist, because in today's day and age, with technology in particular, we're getting so segmented that people can go and listen to any particular kind of music that they like. I like Frank Zappa. There's not too many places that play Frank Zappa anymore. Uh, opera, Japanese music, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but there needs to be an outlet for that that's not controlled by money, that's not controlled by the record companies, then it's not controlled by greed and all the other things that usually drive uh, things like the record industry and always have. But there needs to be a place like KFJC for people to experiment, to learn, to grow, and to have fun. My years at KFJC were probably some of the best of my life, but it was also some of the hardest. We worked our asses off. We literally would put in 10, 12 hour days and not think anything of it. People don't know what it takes to make a radio station like KFJC operate, uh, I, you know, in general. Most people don't understand what it takes. It takes dedication time, effort, and a passion. And I think people need a place where they can apply their passion and a place where they can have fun. Uh, so again, some of the best years of my life, but also some of the hardest. Uh, the other thing that I'd say about why places like KFJC need to exist was, as I got older and I got into the business world, one of the things that I realized was that the skills that I learned at KFJC 
were probably the most valuable business skills that I have to this day. Multitasking. You know, you go out and you look at the business world today and everybody wants a resume. You know, what are the three things they want on a resume? Oh, can you multitask? Can you communicate effectively? And, you know, are you dedicated and conscientious? Those are the things that I learned at KFJC. I learned how to write. I learned how to write to be read, which made me a good communicator. So I'm really good at writing test scripts and business plans and all that other crap that makes a businessman successful. I learned at KFJC. The other thing was multitasking. I always joked about this because in business, that's one of the things that they always like people to be able to do, handle a lot of things at once. And for me, being a DJ and working at KFJC was the ultimate in multitasking. And again, it's one of those things that people don't really think about. But you go, oh, well, being a DJ, that's fun, right? You get to sit and play records. Okay, but think about it. You go in and you sit down at a studio. The first thing is you have to go pick all your music that you're going to play, or at least most of it. You have to have it in order. You sit down, you start your show. You have to know what you're going to say when you open the microphone. You can't stumble. You have to write down everything that you're playing. You have to keep track of a log. You also have to answer the phones. Oh, and then you also have to be queuing up records for what you're going to play next. And then when somebody requests something, then you got to go figure out if you have it or not. So while the music is playing, you're listening to the air sound, you're writing it down, you're getting ready to play the next song. Then you have to go run to the record library and go find another record and then bring it all back. So for me, it was a great uh, exercise in multitasking and made me pretty damn good at it. And it was one of those things that makes me successful today. Um, the other thing that was really cool to be a part of was the Frank Zappa special at KFJC. So at the time, 1981, in early January and February, I was working with a guy named Dan Fort, who was guitar player and listener uh, editor at the time. Dan had done an interview with Frank in his living room in 79, and he, I, I knew Dan through the blues scene. And we told him we were going to do a special. It was going to be 10 hours long, over two days. And could we possibly use his tapes? And he said, well, you know, the quality's not great. I used him as a transcription for a, a written uh, article. But he said, let me see what I can do. So anyway, Dan let us uh, get a copy of his tapes. We edited it down. We probably ended up with about a half an hour's worth of little one minute, two minute, three minute segments that we took. And we edited it into uh, Frank's spoken word. And we used it during the special. We also. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have the world premiere of three album sides of Frank's material at the time. So when we were doing our special, it was 1981, it was in February, we were going to do the special in April. Found out Frank was coming out with an album, we said, can you get us a copy? And uh, Bennett Glotzer, Glotzer Management in L.A. said, no, it's too early, you know, we don't want it out there on the public yet. So we decided to delay our special until May. Well, as it turns out, because really we'd never done anything like that at KFJC, 10 hours was like a big chunk of time. Some other people said, hey, well, I could do a special on James Brown and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. so we got like three or four guys that said, hey, let's do another special. And it all turned out that they were going to line up in the month of May. So long story short, um, our project got delayed a little bit. But Glosser Management sent me three test pressings, uh, one-sided test pressings of uh, Frank Zappa's albums, Tinseltown Rebellion, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, and The Return of Son of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. Then we actually had the world premiere. We played on May 1st and 2nd, 1981, which turned out to be the very first Month of Mayhem special that's been going on at KFJC since 1981.